guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness here on Terrific Tuesday here in Connecticut. Guys, life's good. Life's good. Double C's abound. <laughs> the weather's beautiful. 1SBs are being sold. Books are being sold. People are loving the kettlebell. Life is good. Anyway, with that said, you saw the thumbnail. Roger Ingram. The goods, man. <laughs> the goods. Now, he comes under the heading, and I've talked about this before, of one of the guys that I really don't know that much about. But I can certainly analyze his jobs, and we will do that. So let me uh, honk a little bit. I have played a little bit today, so this is not the first notes of the day. No, I've played a little bit. But I'm going to do the bulk of my practicing this afternoon. Um, I actually have a couple hours free, and I'm going to do it all practicing. Anyway, let's see what we got, and then we'll talk about Roger Ingram's chops. ounces of water, two tablespoons of lemon juice, doesn't have to be fresh squeezed, and two tablespoons of agave nectar. Drink that all day and watch your waistline go. Oh, anyway, that's for the other channel. Roger Ingram. Now, I have said many times that I don't like to do uh, videos on people that I can't bring a little something to the table that you can't read in a Wikipedia, Wikipedia or his biography or something like that. Perfect example is Louis Dowd as well. You know, there's enough, he's all over the internet. Never been him. But I can't analyze his chops and all this sort of stuff. So I decided to do, now, what happened is this. Another terrific, terrific uh, trumpet player named Nick Drodzdoff. Okay, got in touch with me last week sometime. And uh, he's about my age, okay? And he uh, stumbled across my, uh, my uh, YouTube channel, knew Jerry back in the day, and found the whole thing interesting. And he, at this point in his life, is trying to make things easier. Now, he's had tremendous success, you know, played with Maynard and all that other stuff. Tremendous success, and he's also a high school uh, physics teacher. Not a dope. No, very, very bright guy. As is Roger Ingram. I'll get, I'll get to that, too. Um, <clears throat> but he did a, uh, in our emails back and forth, when can you do it, when can you do it, uh, could you have that time? He has a podcast that he does, and he did a podcast on Roger Ingram. And I'm going to leave it down below that you can listen to it. It's a very, very interesting Interesting, interesting uh, interview. And there is a clip from the Harry Connick Jr. Band that is lights out. Okay? Now, that's how I came to Roger Ingram. And again, I never met him. Never met him. Know nothing about him other than what you've read on his bio for Yamaha Trumpets. I believe it's Yamaha Trumpets. doesn't matter. And... Uh, but I can, I do feel comfortable analyzing chops. All right? Now, here's the deal. What we all know about Roger Ingram, uh, he grew up in California, okay? I don't even believe he went to college. Now, Jerry knew, uh, he did take a lesson or two from Jerry, okay? And Jerry knew him quite well. And Jerry tells me, told me, <laughs> that Roger and his wife were both members of Mensa. Now, if you know anything about that, that is only for people with IQs over 130. So even though this guy never went to college, guy, <laughs> bright guy, bright, bright guy, 
Never met him. Never met him. Okay? If we were passing each other in the street, I'm not sure either of us would stop and say, hey, aren't you? No, I, I don't think we don't know. Okay? See, I'm a little uncomfortable. Anyway, with that said. So, um, he, uh, at a very young age, was on the road with Maynard, Woody Herman, blah, 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 blah. Played uh, lead trumpet for quite a while with um, Wynton Marsalis and the uh, Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra, which is a prestigious seat, an absolutely prestigious seat. Um, yeah, you can have all the chops you need, but if you can't swing, uh, Wynton's not going to put up with it. So he, he, he's got both. He's absolutely got both. But he, came, he rose to fame, and his claim to fame, I would hasten to say, is with the Harry Connick Jr. Orchestra. Uh, I don't believe he's with them anymore. No, he's not with them anymore. But guys, if you listen to those recordings when Harry was, and there's stuff all over the internet. If you listen to that stuff when Harry, was, Harry Connick was hot, it's all uh, Roger and killing it. Just killing it. Now, the whole thing um, that we talk about ad nauseum here, the tone will tell you if it's right. It's just, when you listen to Roger, it's there in spades. The, the, in that regard, the tone will tell you. He reminds me, puts me very much in mind of, uh, who's the guy with Jimmy Stir? The lead player. I did a couple videos on him. It'll come to me. <laughs> It'll come to me. Anyway, puts me very much in mind of the lead player for Jimmy Stir. Okay, in that the minute he starts playing, you hear the power unlimited, you hear the center of tone, you hear the ease of playing. There is no stretch whatsoever, there's no strain anywhere in his chops. Eric Park, Eric Park, the Jimmy Stir guy, reminds me very much a lot of him in, in that regard. Now, unlike Roger, I know that Eric Park can tone it down and play as delicately and as finitely in, in a you know, brass quintet setting. Whether Roger Ingram can do that, I don't know. Since that, I don't know that much about it. But I will go out on a limb and say this. What I can analyze from what I hear with his chops, if he can't do it today, give him a little while if he knows he has a gig, and, and he can absolutely get it because his chops are so right. Because there's no strain. There's no strain from what I hear. Okay. Now, Let's take a look at his chops. Now, I know many times I told you that I don't want you looking in the mirror, okay? And I don't want you trying to emulate his, somebody's horn angle, and we'll get to the horn angle in a minute, okay? But there are some characteristics that are similar to all great players with great chops. Number one, I don't know anybody, any great chops player that stretches the corners. Tightens the corners. And if you look at his chops, there is no stretch there whatsoever. And if they're not stretched, there's really only one thing that can look. It looks like especially the top lip as well as the bottom lip. It looks very, very fleshy. It looks fat. Many times, great chops players look like they're, 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 they've got an air bubble in there. Okay? Which is not the case with any of them. But that's what it looks like. And Roger has that in the spades. Look at that top lip. See how muscular it looks? It, it almost looks like he's flexing his muscle. It's not. It's relaxed. And I'll tell you, you listen to his attacks. He's popping with his tongue. He's popping with his tongue. I don't have to talk to him for that. I guarantee you his tongue is in the right place. Now, he might be the type of guy that couldn't tell you where, you know, like um, Dave Steimer, couldn't tell you where his tongue is. Okay. Maybe, again, I don't know him enough to know how much analytical he's gotten with this, how much he's struggled with it. I don't think he's struggled too much. Okay? But, again, if you listen to the tone, power, range, and endurance, up to D's and E's above double C, wide open, wide open. Guys, in that regard, I put him in the class of Lynn Nicholson. You know how I feel about Lynn Nicholson. I did a video of him months ago, thinking that he may just be the best ever, but I'm talking about that. In that regard, Roger might have a fatter tone up there. Now, it's hard to tell with technology today. 
you know, where the microphone was, who, who was, you know, overdubbing it. It's hard to say. Without hearing both of them standing next to him on a stage in a battle of the chops. But he, his tone might be fatter above a high C. Double C, rather. Anyway, guys, I strongly suggest you check out that interview with Nick down below. Um, and Nick has a lot of stuff up there, too. He's got nice chops, man. Nice chops. He's trying to make it easier. Thinks he's working too hard. He's going to get it. He's absolutely 100% going to get it. But that uh, interview with Nick, uh, with Roger, worth listening to. And there is a clip. Oh, I had, I had the, uh, the number written down. It's in the middle of the interview. It's over an hour interview. It's in the middle where he plays a clip with Harry Connick. Sublime. Sublime. Not, listen, the tone pound, but also his articulation. The articulation is that those suckers are popping, man. And that is what you can tell if the chops are right. Okay, so enjoy the video. If you, again, I don't know that much about him. If anybody have any comments about Roger Ingram and want to um, leave them down below, be my guest. And uh, Roger, via Nick, I am a big fan. And if you happen to stumble across this via Nick, and you want to add something to it, <laughs> let, me, let me know. If there's little peccadillos there that you think would add to what we're trying to do here with the chops and all this, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables. Do your kettlebells and live your life with true power. Love you all.